stop with you. <laughs> you do it all. You're so hilarious. We, I was at, a, at some thing at a opening at something, at Kathy and Jimmy's oh, yeah. uh, thing, and I'm in the middle of doing an interview with, with like Access Hollywood or something, and the camera's here, and the guy's asking me a question. I'm here. She immediately, right between us, goes, excuse me, and walks between the camera and me. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> You're I do that at a party when there's like no one there and there's two people that are standing really close together. I go in between and say, excuse me, great party. <laughs> like, that's hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to steal that now. You got it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> All right, so now you just got back from China, is that right? Yeah. I was, I was in Shanghai for about uh, a week and then another week I was in Shanghai is just like Manhattan, though. You know, it's very busy and everything. But I really wanted to go somewhere where it was like the kind of China I thought of when, you know, when you're a kid growing up. Uh -huh. So we filmed in this small town called Jingxi. And, um, sure. Oh. <laughs> it was like untouched by time. It was what I had imagined, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and there was a man making shoes for people. You know, you just sit there and he takes this size right there on this cobblestone walkway. And there's a canal where a woman was doing her wash by the canal and hitting it with a stick, you know. And I'm watching this and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, I, this is like a moment frozen in time. And then her cell phone rings. <laughs> I could not, I was so angry. I'm like, who's that? <laughs> I'm having an ancient Chinese moment oh. here and I, it turns into an LA moment. <laughs> What could she possibly, who she's talking to? I, that's what I was thinking, like, what, hey, you almost done with the wash? Oh uh, yeah, just put the downy on the rinse cycle, smart ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, I'll be right home. <laughs> They're just gonna go to the gym. Yeah, I, it always cracks me up. I was at, at dinner the other night, and outside of a restaurant, there's like a 10-year-old girl on a cell phone, like just chatting on the cell phone. It's, I mean, I love when a kid does this. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I had to use to ask if I could use the phone. Once I have a cell phone that I could just be talking on. It was crazy. I know. So, all right, so you come home, and uh, and where do you live? In this area? How yes. Do, yeah, like, I live very, like, 10 minutes from here. But what's the exact address? <laughs> all right, well. I come home, my neighbor calls me, and she said, Sherry, I don't know if you know it, but there's a really scary swarm of bees above your house. And I knew that I had bees, you know, but I... If you leave them alone, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, when you have neighbors calling, like, they're worried for their animals or whatever. Yeah. So I thought, okay, and I really let it go, so I called this bee man. And he came over, and he said, I think they're in your house. They're outside. So he went up into my guest room, and he said... They were staying in the guest room, at least. They were. <laughs> <laughs> and when Good. they were, Good. they were in the wall in the guest room, because he said, because the wall started puckering out, and he said, here, put your hand here. And it was warm from the, he said, it's from the honey. And, you know, the honey produces moisture. And that's why the wall is puckering. And I said, well, what do we do? He goes, we have to take down the wall and get the honey out. And I said, no, no. And he's like, yeah. So. <laughs> and then what'd you say? <laughs> You're taking me for a ride. <laughs> you know? So then they come back. They take the wall down. And I'm hearing all this noise, and he says, Sherry, I want you to come up and see this. So I go up, and I, I look, and he said, look. And the wall was down. I go, what, are they behind the wiring? And he goes, that's not wiring. They're honeycombs. How big was it? Oh, my God. It was like, it was like six feet of wall. And I said, no, honeycombs is a cereal. <laughs> it's fictitious. It's a cereal. There's no such thing as honeycomb. And it was, and he took out three... Where, where are the bees that you're not, that you're able to stand there and look at that? Where were the bees? They weren't in there. Well, <laughs> they were all no, gone No, I'm going to tell you something, Ellen. What happened was he said he knew that, that people were coming in. He, this is what he said to me. He said, put your ear up against the wall the day before when I felt the wall. And, um, and I didn't. He said, you, now listen. And I hear, <laughs> and I said, what's that? And he said, that's the queen warning that there's trouble. I'm like... How big is she? She's barking. <laughs> the queen was barking. <laughs> so, so the queen's in trouble and they stay away? Shouldn't they come no, no, in? No, no, they, they knew to, you know, because when they were taking down the wall, they knew to get out. So what they do is they have to remove the honey 
or else the bees will come back or you'll get termites. So this honey seriously was dripping out of my walls. Just, it was really, really something so neat to see. Wow. So. No, I uh, saw it. It's, it's, it, I, I asked what that was. Fresh from my wall. Uh -huh. <laughs> well. <laughs> and the stuff down here, I suppose, is asbestos, or what is the? Uh... Just, don't worry about that. That'll, All right. That'll just clean you out. All right. <laughs> we have to take a commercial. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, the hilarious Sherry O'Terry. You make me laugh so hard. You really do. You're so funny. And I loved you on Saturday Night Live. I miss you like crazy on Saturday Night Live. Thank you. You had some of the best characters. Oh. What was the name? This, this character was hilarious. What was the name of this character? <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was Colette Reardon. Uh -huh. uh, she was um, my prescription drug lady. I was getting the refills at the pharmacy. Uh huh. She was kind of loosely based on um, my Nana. And back then in the 70s, like, you know, you just, if you were, if something was prescribed by a doctor, it was word, you know, it didn't matter who had you on what, and everybody had different doctors. When I, when, is it so funny? Because when I was little, I mean, half her makeup be on, you know, she, <laughs> I figured she'd get the other half later or something. <laughs> and, like down the face. Right? Like it's like, oh, I'll get that later. Um, but she would come over to the house and I would say, Nana, can I see your pillbox? And because she had the most beautiful bejeweled pill box. Like back then, cigarettes were like, she would have her cigarettes in a uh, sterling silver case and with the matching flasks for the coffee table. It was a set. All she needed was the gun rack. And so, I, so she would take it out and I would touch it. And then I'd say, okay, will you tell me what they are for again? So she'd open it up like story time and she would say, that one's for nerves. The pink ones um, are for, uh, Water weight, which is all this is. <laughs> she always said that's, that's all it is. The rest, well, if that damn breaks, I'll move. <laughs> and she goes, this one's, um, <laughs> she would say, this one's um, just for pep. Just, just for pep. pep. <laughs> Little pep, no one gets hurt. Right? And this is to help me sleep after all the pep. Great. You're hilarious. Thanks for being here. You're oh, so funny. So, so um, much pleasure. And uh, Sherry O'Terry, everybody. Uh, the big finish is next. Don't go anywhere. Do Don't. You know